Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Sesso, and did you guys actually know there's some really cool text effects you can do in literally just two layers? Now on one hand, there's this really cool like ghosty, rainbowy, like multicolored, mystical looking thing. And on the other hand, there's like really cool like blur, bleed type effect. And both these kind of effects kind of live in the street world culture. So hopefully you guys have seen some kind of effect like this before. And did you guys know it can be done so easily and quickly in literally two layers, starting off with like a rainbow one. Let's just jump into it and hopefully you guys learn something cool. All right, guys, so let me show you guys how easy and quick this honestly is. It's, it's honestly so simple. <laughs> so the first thing we're actually gonna start off with over here is gonna go to our adjustments tab and we're gonna use a gradient map. Now, for this gradient map, you basically need three different nodes as your default node. So for that, for the record, it's actually gonna be white on the far left, okay? On the far right is a black, and then the middle is gonna be another white. So it's gonna go white, white, black, White's on the left hand side, black. Oh, let's not say that. <laughs> so, once you guys actually have this good to go, what I would recommend you guys to do is now just basically choose your colors that are gonna go on. Oh, go in between. I'm just messing up all over the place. So, basically, right, we're gonna use a nice little blue as our first color here. Maybe like a little bit darker blue, something like this, right? For my second color, I wanna choose like a nice different tone of blue because why not and honestly i'm choosing more toward the top area because it makes it more kind of like pretty in my opinion like the more lower opacity kind of you know saturation makes it look pretty good in my opinion right so for this one over the third one i'm gonna do like a nice pinkish or maybe like a purple maybe over here i'll do like a nice orange right because that's kind of cool then i'm like in the middle i'm just putting a nice yellow i don't have to put a lot of colors but the more linear in my case i was saying don't do anywhere between like nothing more than five i think it's a pretty good ratio per sign okay so the right hand side i'm gonna choose some more blue because i like blue let's go green actually like a nice greenish teal let's go with like a nice purple and let's go with like a uh -huh. Pink, right? And then like a nice brown edit off. I think the brown kind of tone on the far right is nice little kind of like link to the actual creator actually did this. And it just looks really good in my opinion. So press OK. And now we're actually gonna go ahead and write my name out. I'm just gonna write the word Sesso just because. Now my text is currently white though, but I'm gonna make it black just like so. Of course, once I do that, I wanna drag this black text right below my gradient map and then our black text becomes white and our white background became a black background because our gradient actually goes from white to black. That's why I kind of have that as it looks right now, right? So what you wanna do is take your text, right click and then convert to a smart object, go to filter, go to blur gallery and then we're gonna go to iris blur which is my favorite one in this case just because i, I just like iris blur so what you're gonna see is four different dots on the right hand side or around the actual circle of your iris in this case right which basically determines where the blur amount is coming from and what direction you want to pull it so if you hold alt on your keyboard select one and move it toward the left or right or whatever it'll move only one point and make it blur that direction a little bit more and this middle circle here is basically determining how much blur is happening period so if i just move this up a lot you can kind of see what's going to happen here if I just take this and move it around just like that. Every... Look how cool that is. If you can't tell yet, if I move this up a little bit more, put this blur a lot more up, you kind of see it's just, I mean, that's a lot, right? They're not going to do all that. But look how freaking sick. If I kind of move this around, you can see all different type of effects we're basically doing with this one blur gallery. Now, of course, there's more than just one blur gallery. There's like, what is it, like six or seven of them right here? Like five, okay? If we're going to do like tilt gallery for a second, right? We take this blur mount, put it up a lot. We can rotate it a little bit just like so. And just like, look how sick that is. I can move it around if I wish to. I can add more blurs. Press OK. If I want to add another blur on top of this, I definitely can. Go back to filter gallery. We'll go to iris blur. So I have a tilt blur and now an iris blur. If I move this over here to the left hand side. You can see what's happening. I press OK. Boom. It's that simple. Look how freaking sick it is. It, it honestly looks pretty sick. And it's just all based around the actual gradient and a white text or a black text in this case. But it's so sick, right? I will say that there's going to be a question that you guys are going to ask me. It's going to be like, hey, Sesso, when I want to export this to a different project, if I right click and then like clip mask it, it gets rid of everything and everything just kind of makes a mess. So what I would recommend you guys to actually do is press Control, Alt, Shift and E to merge everything into one single layer. As you can guys see now, if I just turn everything off, it's just one single layer. And what I recommend you guys to do, if I drag this into a different document for a second, so I'm gonna take this really quick, drag it over just like so, and I'm gonna change my blender from normal into like linear dodge add or lighten maybe is a pretty good one right here. You can see the lighten looks pretty good. So I'd recommend you guys to just treat it as like a, a, a PNG stock from Google that doesn't actually have a, no, a clear background. You, you guys get what I'm saying. So now of course, just make sure that you're actually in a bigger document than what you're designing in. That way you can scale it as needed and you can kind of rasterize it like layer if you want to make it bigger and smaller. Um, otherwise, I recommend you just could just kind of like, you know, make it a full layer just like so again go to select color range choose the black background in the, on the back right then change your fuzziness to like all the way up press ok press delete twice 
and then you just take this and move this around if you guys want to as well either way kind of works but i just kind of like whatever fits your boat in that case i don't even know what i just said but basically that's it you can see how cool it is but this is really cool let me show you guys the second one and how simple and easy it is as well okay so now for this bleed type effect that is actually super freaking cool too so for me i actually have two types actually stacked up with each other of course you can use one text if you guys want to but i have two in this case so what i want to do is i'm going to highlight both of them and no matter what if you have one or two highlight your text right click on it and then choose a convert to a smart object right so for this you can low-key save this psd as a template to your actual project and if you want to change your text you just double click on this page right here just like so once you double click boom you can change it in here blah 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 you can save it exit and that'll basically be changed in your original document however that's not what we want to do i just want to show you guys of course smart objects now first i'm going to do i'm going to go to where it says filter blur gaussian blur and i'm going to change my gaussian blur amount to about 10 or so pixels and press ok Right after that, I'm going to go to where it says filter once again. We're going to go to where it says blur and we're going to choose radial blur. And for radial blur, we're going to choose around 7% amount on spin and make sure quality is on best and press OK. Now, you might be asking yourself, this is not what I saw in the beginning, but wait, th watch this. OK, we're going to go over here in the bottom for the adjustments. We're going to choose threshold and boom. Sick, right? So for the record, depending on what text you guys are using, you might not actually get connection immediately like I do. But for the record, if you guys were to actually change your properties, right? If I just kind of zoom in for a second, go to the actual threshold, click over here in your properties for your threshold, move it to the right, you get more connection. It gets a little more kind of like muddy and blurry. Of course, it doesn't look too good like close up. But if you look on the navigator over here for like a smaller version, you can still kind of read it, but not the best. But if you move it to the left, right? You get more separation, but we don't really want that. That's not what we're going for. We're going more for more connect connectivity, right? So depending on your font, if you're not really getting enough connectivity immediately, like I had it right here, I would suggest you guys go to your gradient blur, change your gradient blur to like, let's just say like a ridiculous amount, like 12 for a second, right? And then immediately let's change our radius from like seven to eight. You guys can see how much aggressive blur this is right here. And if I go back to my properties, I would have to lower it to the left to get less connection. So it depends on what you guys would want, but that's, that's it. That's that's the effect right there. Now, for the record, one of you guys are probably gonna be asking me like, yo, Sesso, how do you export this? Same issue as the other one. You can't just like drag this out, right? You can't just connect this or, you know, create a clip mask. You can't really do that. So what you gotta have to do, okay, is select your threshold, select your text, just like so with control clicking, okay? Then right click, you can just group your layers or just like, I'm just gonna just control G to group it up, right? And then over here in the bottom adjustments, we're gonna choose solid color. Now for this, I want to choose black, press OK. And I'm actually going to right click on my, uh, my uh, what do you call this, layer mask right here and actually delete it immediately, okay? Once you've done that, you hide it, click back on your uh, group one, which is your bleed type, right? We're going to go over here to where it says select color range, choose the black and make sure your fuzziness right here is at 0%, okay? So zero, press OK. This will basically make a selection purely of your black, which is perfect because the only thing on this actual canvas is black or white. So now clicking back on your color range and hiding your group, just like so, click on your color range, go over here to where it says layer mask right here, click on it, there you go. That's it. So if you guys ever want to like kind of like repeat or just like, you know, save different versions of your bleed types, you basically just make, you know, more and more and more solid colors, delete the actual layer mask and put it on the layer mask. And that's all it is. So now I can just drag this out to a different, you know, document and you're good. But that's it. Hopefully you guys have a little bit of fun learning these little quick little type effects. This is actually really quick, but also they're so versatile and so, so dope. Don't forget displacement maps on the bleed type, by the way, if you could like, go to your you know document, use a displacement map, use like a cool, like grungy displacement map or like a, a fabric or whatnot. You can make it look really freaking dope too. So that's all I'm going to say about that, but this is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed I totally forgot my birthday is good. I'm not going to be able to see you guys until after my birthday. So really, this is the only video that you're going to be able to see me before my birthday, which is June 7th, Tuesday. If you guys are watching this on the day it's uploaded, but hey, if you know, present, like, subscribe, and enjoy me, love me, you, maybe. But yes, that is it, friends. So with that being said, Sesso HQ out. Remember, you gotta keep smiling, stay positive, and stay a freaking part of guys. Later, much love, peace, and of course, you know, open Adobe. Now I give you guys a reason. Enjoy.